Before I move on to what I was going to discuss today, I just wanted to bring up the fact that I have already uh, uploaded this uh, Nightcap Village is a Scam PDF and left a link and I will do so uh, in the description below with this one as well. Uh, I had a bit of a read of it after a bit more of a read, got right into it and by the time I had got a certain way through um, I got the very distinct impression that I don't think this is Mark Darwin's style. See I've listened to a lot of Mark Darwin's videos and he even says it in the videos himself. He likes to talk. He's a talker. He's not a writer. And even if he was a writer and he got someone else to write down his words that he dictated, he would say things differently. And there are certain things that are said in the context of all of this that um, if it was Mark Darwin, he would be a little bit clearer on the facts that later have shown to not actually be 100% accurate. So if he were, if it was Mark Darwin and he was personally involved with it, he'd know what was going on. And we'd find out now more that, well, yes, that was the truth rather than, oh, hang on, that wasn't quite accurate. But the thing that... Um, Derek Zillman said, Van Lyshout can just starve everyone out. You know, that's the kind of sentiment that if uh, Peter Van Lyshout can just say, well, you know what, I can stick my head in the sand because I can starve everyone out. It's like, I don't think so, mate. You might be able to starve them out, but I don't think you're going to outlive them. Do you want to spend the rest of your life you know, sieged in your own castle? I suppose that's a choice we all make. Anyway, sidetracked. So, I, um, I didn't, uh, after I came to that conclusion... I thought, well, I can't in good conscience say, well, you know, I believe this is Mark Darwin because I don't actually believe Mark Darwin did write it. Maybe somebody that um, knows Mark Darwin might have written down some things that he'd said. I don't know. All I know is that, one, way too long for a man that doesn't like writing anything. I guarantee you, if he was the kind of guy that would type you a, uh, a story, it'd be a one-pager, maybe even a one-paragraph. No, he's a talker, not a writer. And there's pages and pages and pages here. So, um, and so as I said, it's just my conclusion on what I'm looking at from everything else that I've looked at, uh, looking at affidavits and other statements and things like that, there is, um, well, what I'd say is this is not the style of a man that doesn't like to, I mean, that he doesn't like to write. He doesn't even like to... Um, type emails. He'd much rather do a YouTube video or Skype talk and as he said in a video he records every single Skype because he was doing a thing that in um, more accusations about Beatrice was actually not only his ex-partner but obviously the one that he was going out with before Stephanie. So, yeah, he was answering things about that. And in that, he talks about, well, he's got certain characteristics. And 
that is that he records everything and so that if anyone turns around to him and says oh well you said this to me he goes no I can't no I didn't and he's saying to this guy in this video that he's directing it to that you know I've only ever had to prove it once so I thought well that's interesting so every single Skype conversation everything he's ever done which is a lot of recording he's got a recording of that's good to know that's really good to know but anyway so we get down to the end of the story and um, you know I'm, this shot of Tyler Tolman is a publicity shot and you know um, he's not everything that he seems to be neither is she neither is their relationship but anyway that's just something else um, now of course it was said that this PDF it's a um, copy of a post back in 2018 was everybody believes that it was Mark Darwin who posted it and it's Derek Zillman that's responding again I have to wonder whether it is Derek Zillman because uh, let's imagine for one minute that maybe it is Derek Zillman that's writing this and he's going to refer to himself in a certain manner he might refer to himself as Derek Mr Zillman or Derek Zillman and keep it in that manner because he's he's in that flow but throughout the whole of these comments there's reference to you know Derek this and then in the next sentence Zillman and it's like um, I mean not many people are going to call themselves by their last name if they're going to refer to themselves in if they were trying to be anonymous more than likely going to use the full name or the first name but to just cut it down to your last name that that would be unusual but then again you know from what I've heard about um, his education and everything maybe the mindset of where he was educated isn't what I'm you know understanding is normal anyway so I mean there's a lot of things that are said in this um, post that I do believe are very factual and I'm not going to say which of those ones I believe are true or not because to a certain degree I'd say everything in here is true from the perspective of the people that wrote it <laughs> put it that way it's what people believed so uh, yes I don't know whether this is actually um, I don't know why people insist on writing all these big capital letters it's like oh I'm stressing the point it's like yeah do you not know how to write a proper paragraph and get your point across with the words rather than bolding underlining or <laughs> turning them into caps no because when you lack substance to your argument you make your words look all pretty and do all the power punching for you it's much like they stick in the dramatic music in the the movies so that it'll intensify the experience for you so um, yes it does down here and there's as I said there's lots of points it doesn't start talking like this is full on into uh, about Mark Darwin and Caroline Coleman and then it starts into defending about PVL and then here we go Derek Derek and then you start going through and you're reading and you see Derek again and then it changes to Zillman 
And as I say, that I don't know, there's just little things about it is that it could be Derek Zillman. But it could also be the same person doing a post, signing up under an anonymous name and putting a response to it. And it could be, let's see, how many people have been burnt and lost that could be wanting to put this out there. Uh, that's why some of the facts are a little bit um, not quite accurate because um, the person that is actually doing this isn't in the inner circle like what Mark Darwin is. Well, that's that's just my impression. Uh, follow the link, have a read, tell me what you think. I mean, it doesn't negate from the things that are said in there because certainly um, the response of the unknown person is definitely very telling about intimate knowledge about uh, Mark Darwin and Caroline Coman and also Derek Zillman and um, PVL. So it might narrow the field down if it wasn't them. Who could it be? Well, you know, who knows what kind of games that AB could play. I don't know, I think uh, maybe he's uh, tastes too much of the produce and his brain cells are fried because this year he's made more stupid mistakes that's going to sink his own boat. But that's what we're going to get on to because... <laughs> oh, yes. Hang on. In amongst the paperwork today, I got sidetracked with something and I ended up on Original Sovereign Tribal Federation again. And it was all pretty, you know, blah, blah, back and forwards and a lot of uh, macho bro bullshit. Yeah, and even a bit of sexism thrown in because the women are speaking out and they should shut their mouths. But uh, there's Donna. I like Donna. Hi, Donna. <laughs> uh, she's got a, a nice little style about her. You know, she just comes in, she says something and says, yeah, well, yeah, if that's true, you've got nothing to worry about. But back and forth, reading all the different comments and responses and following the conversation, I came across her comment and I thought, wow, I need to share that because that is a really good point. I'd never actually thought of it that way. So what did Donna actually say? And I'm not going to call Mark McMurtry by his tribal name at all anymore. He does not get that honour. He doesn't deserve it in any way, shape or form. So anyone that knows Mark McMurtry knows that uh, this page is titled up by the two names that he uses. And I'm not going to give him the honour because you know what? The point that Donna brings up here Let's get into it. So uh, this is in response to uh, lots of conversation that's gone on. And uh, Donna's said to Mark McMurtry, Ah, then you would know the dirt that's going to arise, Anna. A case of watch this space. Like I said before, if you stick to your story of doing nothing wrong, well, then you have nothing to worry about. And by the way, are you not a white man yourself? You see, if you were a black man, it is well known, blackfella protocol, that there would be no desire to be accepted into another tribe that has different stories, different song lines, different dances, art and skin groups, and kinship system. True black man to his true nat true culture would never betray his ancient identity. 
but I know it's pretty common for our mob to take in white people. I know quite a few white people accepted, including into my own tribe. You'd be the first black fella case I heard of. That's, of course, if you are black. Oh, good point, Donna. Really good point. And tell me, anyone out there, can you answer the question, do you know anybody else that is a black fella and has been adopted into another tribe? Do you? And how many tribes can you belong to? I mean, uh, Mark McMurtry seems to be gathering as, you know, as many tribes as he can under his OSTF. And the thing is that if you're signed over consent for him to act on your behalf, uh, do you think that he's not sort of getting his own little kingdom with his own bunch of followers? Uh, he, he's quite pompous like that. In fact, he's he's getting to look a little bit like Henry the Eighth did, you know, eating too much and his arms and his fingers are getting all that little bit too chubby because he's sitting back getting fat off other people's hard work. So that's a good question, Donna. Why would a true, real black man give up his ancient identity? Why would he have any desire to take on another tribe's stories and song lines, dances and, and dream stories, dream times? I know it's all different in each tribe. It's a very good point. So if someone's got a very good answer for Donna out there, that, oh yes, it's common, it happens all the time. Or is Mark McMurtry unique in that he's the first black fella to be adopted into a black fella tribe? <laughs> well, I know that um, when I was uh, in uh, northern New South Wales, I came across a guy that he had a tribe in... Um, Western Australia offered to teach him the clever man ways and uh, he knocked it back because he, because of exactly what is said here, because of no desire to be accepted into another tribe, none, not even if it meant acquiring all the secrets, still no desire. So there is no carrot that you can dangle in front of a black man to get him to betray his ancient identity. And so why would he need, if he is a black fella, to then go and get himself adopted and get a Walpuri skin name, if that is indeed what happened? As yet, I cannot confirm that 100%. I have not been handed the decision, so I, as I said, I'm not going to speak on that. But down the bottom, you'll see that Mark McMurtry has uh, these four different Thorowal, Githabal, Kokotha, Yori. Actually, it reminded me of Kokoda when I saw that name. Um, now, I don't know much about the tribal names at this point. Uh, stage I haven't looked at it. Perhaps others can educate me on how all these four are connected. And also too that I know that marrying between tribes is not that common until, you know, recent times. So how far back through how many generations could you claim to be connected to all tribes? If what Mark McMurtry claims is that, well, seriously, I suppose as soon as he goes round and the OSTF gets the signature of one of the elders, there you go, he's just added another tribe to his bloodline. You know, people have said it over and over again, he wants to be king of his own, own sovereign kingdom. And every king has to have people to rule over. You know, it's time to realise that you have just 
put your faith in the wrong man. He can't even own his own skin. <laughs> but anyway, so it was actually Mark McMurtry's comment to what Donna said about what's going on with the Nightcap Corporation. Mmm, interesting. Now I have to say that uh, Donna reminds me of so many strong women that are out there. I would call you sisters, but I think we're more mothers. And we've got the wisdom of that as well. <laughs> I think you know what I'm talking about, don't you? Because there's a lot of us connecting. And some of us um, are more vocal, like me, but there's a lot that are not. And I'm happy to be that uh, voice out there uh, so that we may uh, be mothers to a, do a different, better way. Because, you know, the thing is that there has been so much imbalance there's all this macho testosterone stuff going on in the OSTF, rejecting the wisdom of women. You know, it's not called Father Earth, it's called Mother Earth. And any of you that ignore the wisdom of mothers, you're a fool. We are the nurturers. We get things done. We don't talk. Because, you know, when, when you've got kids, when you, you can't just talk, you have to do. They do not allow you to just talk. You have to do. So we're always coming up with, how do we fix that? Get it done as quick as we can. It's not a matter of the more delays, the more pays. It's a matter of, right, let's get this done quick, and get out of the way so I can get better things done. So all of this very masculine, uh, aggressive point of view, especially that Mark McMurtry is so good at, he's also very good at showing his ego. And I love it when he, he's got to show that he knows the facts and the truth. Because as I was reading through this post, I thought, are you kidding me? Did you know that Mark McMurtry says the developers held off the sale of 3222 because they thought that people wanted to challenge it in the Supreme Court and the developers thought they should not settle until they'd given people the chance to do it. Yeah, that's what they actually, that's what he actually said. <laughs> now, let's get, see where he says fact? One of the facts is 3222 is in the hands of a liquidator. The liquidator makes all the decisions. The developer has zero say. So if Mark McMurtry, as one of the developers of Nightcap or Minjimble, is saying the developers influenced the liquidator and instructed the liquidator what to do, rather than the liquidator who's in charge of things tells you what to do, um, is that kind of, is that really legal that you as the developer should be instructing the liquidator on what to do? Because let's face it, if you knew what to do and not stuff things up, you wouldn't have needed to appoint the liquidator. Adrian Brennock would not be a bankrupt. 
<laughs> That's one of your facts. Point that out. Oh, but let's get on because if you think that I just made that story up, nah, you can't make this bullshit up. Only someone like Mark McMurky can. <laughs> Hang on. Now, before I do go on and read it, do you think that that's a feasible story, that that's very believable, that the developers so kindly held off the liquidator from selling the property and getting the money so that people could go to court and challenge them? When it had all been settled according to them, that's why they got all their documents up there plastered everywhere. We're in the right, we're in the right, we're in the right. Look at us, look at us. We've got legal documents everywhere to show that we're right. Well, all that shows is that, hmm, maybe there's good grounds for perjury now. Because, you know, one thing is that when you do first set about to lie, you better damn well hope that you never, ever be heard speaking the truth. Because <laughs> if you are caught out, you're fucked. And that's what AB's been done. He's fucked. He fucked himself. Nobody else. Now, the thing is that uh, I suppose all of the others are going to have to wonder, wow, well, how's AB going to get himself out of this one? Who's he going to blame? Well, I tell you what, little uh, Mark McMurky up there on 3222, he's been sitting there for quite a while, making himself king of the hill, king of all the tribes, signing you all up. Tell me, how many tribes have actually signed, signed something with Mark McMurtry? What did you actually sign? Do you know what you even signed? Or are you going to say, oh, I trust him? Oh, you need to know what you signed. If you've signed anything with Mark McMurtry and OSTF, you need to take it to a lawyer and find out what the hell you signed and what you might be liable for. Or otherwise you could find yourself in a whole heap of shit and not know it. You cannot trust people that talk legal talk all the time. They're designing to screw over people in the legal system. And if you cross them, you will go from being a bro to a hoe in no time. And they will turn on you and sell you, sell you out. And let's get in to the post, shall we? So, Mark McMurtry says to Donna, Please do tell what the Nightcap Corporization is all about. You are an ignorant government shill who will repeat any bullshit lies that you read online so long as the lies and misinformation conform to your acidic narrative that you, and only you, has a right to speak. Well, he sounds so much like Max Egan. Are you toxic old men all the same? Do you all sound the same? Seriously, you really do give men a bad name. And trust me, I don't hate men. <laughs> Just, you know, there's some bad women out there too, but I'll tell you what, these ones aren't doing the manhood any any good, are they? And he's saying this. Now, yes, the next part here, Donna's uh, been the one that's accused him of uh, covering up for child molesters. And she's she hasn't given up on him on that either. She's been on his case about it. And she's clearly said something previously and he's responded with, well, let me get on with the post. Shame on you and your slanderous accusation that I have ever touched any child. But like Alan Hamer and the other government trolls on here, you don't have the integrity 
to rectify your filthy comments. <laughs> he's he's such a a typically ugh, yeah pompous, up himself, full of his own importance that he talks down to people all the time. Like, you know, oh my shit don't stink. I know everything. Well, and that's why he keeps putting in here facts in big letters and truth because he needs to reinstill to people the facts and the truth so that they will keep believing his sales pitch because he's just a, another salesman. If you haven't figured that out by now, you seem well. So anyway, so let's get back. If you want to know the facts in respect of Nightcap, maybe you should get off your fat ass and come up here and sit with the mob who you pretend to speak on behalf of. Or don't you have the common respect for them to do that? I am sure they'd love to set you straight, you sanctimonious gimp. Well, there we go, another implied threat. <laughs> so typical of Mark McMurtry and all of you. Yeah, I be. You're real good at him, aren't you? Where's your testicular fortitude? You're all bloody ballless talking that way to women. You, what, you love beating up on women, don't you? Is that your forte? Is that, uh, you know, AB's good, his skill is fucking people over, your skill is fucking women over? You're a nasty little man, aren't you? <laughs> then again, you all are, aren't you? So, for the record, a little bit of information, and in brackets, truth. And when you do bother to find out the truth, you can apologise any time. Although I and others know you won't because you don't have the integrity nor decency. Well, you see, that's the thing, you little little murky man. Not going to apologise for telling the truth. No one is. How about you apologise for lying? Hmm? Let's see you do that. Oh, no. No testicular fortitude. You like that one, don't you? You use that a lot. Testicular fortitude. No one's got testicular fortitude. Only I've got testicular fortitude. I've got the biggest bowls in the world and I'm going to be king over the tribes. Yeah. And how many tribes have you signed up? Oh, master. Master Mark McMurtry, I hope the tribes are enjoying the fact that you've got a master now. You used to have a lot more freedoms until you signed up with under him. So, to all of the liars and deceivers who have been peddling the G.I. Linda lies and misrepresentations. <laughs> I don't even talk to her. And I've talked to many of people that uh, don't even know her. It's like, who? <laughs> but anyway, um, fact. The purchase price for the property Bulla Bulla has been paid to the liquidator and full court and federal court in full. Hmm. Okay. I thought it would have been paid to the liquidator who would then distribute it to the creditors with the permission of the court. I don't know why the federal court would get it, but then... I'm probably just as experienced in liquidating affairs as what Stephen Starts is. He's not even registered. Hey, I could do it too if anyone wants me to liquidate their company. Appoint me as you're an accountant. Then... Um, then as your administrator and then um, we can go to the court and get me appointed liquidator and we can do it all the way we planned. Sounds like the way they did it anyway. So, fact, all investors will be paid by the liquidator. Well, I thought the funds were paid to the federal court, so how could they be paid to the, by the liquidator? <laughs> Okay, fact, 
The only investor in Bulla Bulla that will not be getting any money back from the liquidator is AB, Adrian Brennock, who incidentally paid 500k, almost 50% of the original purchase price of the 1.15 mil. Well, that 500k almost more than likely came out of other investors' accounts and funds and money. Not a single cent came out of his pocket. And where he says here, a fact that is never mentioned by the likes of G.I. Linda, Jenny Looney Dick, Kerry Cashel. Oh, seriously, are you guys going to get my name right yet? Come on. David Vincent, Rhyme Turnbull. Now, this is a fact that we've brought up before, that even if, if he hadn't have taken 500, what was that, the loan money that was supposed to be taken out to purchase it in the first place, and now he's claiming it's his. But let's say, for example, he did have a receipt for 500,000. Well, if that was the case, the bankrupt trustee would hold that $500,000 receipt and go to the liquidator and say, fine, thank you. That's 500000 towards paying off the creditors of his bankruptcy, of Adrian Brennock's, Brennock's bankruptcy. So he can't claim back the five hundred, even if he did have a receipt, even if he did pay for it. And I mean, seriously, pigs are going to fly before I believe that he paid one single cent. Everybody else pays for this. They go out and buy things. And they even use native tr title and sovereignty issues to protect his house from being seized. They're using it to protect themselves in the court's from all their activities so that, oh yes, let's tie it up in native title claim and that'll stop all the action against me. We heard it in the Vox. So that's one fact that we'll tell you there is that he couldn't get it back even if he had a receipt and had paid that money because he'd lose every single cent of it to the trustee to go to his bankrupt creditors. And bringing up the fact of another fact is that he has got a judgment in his favour for 200000 Now, his trustee for the bankruptcy, Art at uh, Worrells, should actually have that judgment and be putting in to claim that against, uh, well, pretty much so that the creditors can get their that 200000 as well. It's an asset of the estate of the bankruptcy of Adrian Brennock. So where is it? In limbo? Well, no one wants to say where it is because they all think that Next year, he'll be discharged from bankruptcy. He'll come along, he'll put in to get the money and he'll get a nice little boost and get to kick someone else again that he doesn't like. Because let's face it, fucking people over is a skill. And he enjoys it. He bloody well enjoys it. So if I didn't point out the fact already that the developers do not make any decisions about a property in liquidation in the hands of a liquidator, to say they made the decision implies the liquidator is not upholding his trust obligations and allowing a bankrupt to make decisions. And I could actually, from all the uh, laws that I've been going through today, almost, uh, if I could be bothered, bringing out the exact violation that that is, that he's actually making any decisions in any companies whatsoever, especially one that he put into liquidation. He's a bankrupt. He put a company into liquidation and the developers are instructing people. But you haven't seen that yet, have you? Because that 
Yeah, that comes in the rest of the facts. He got himself warmed up to see how far he could stretch the truth. <laughs> so, fact. The developers bought the property fairly at an open public auction for $2 million and sought three extensions to the settlement date based on the fact that G. Linda and her lunatic groupies indicated to the federal court that they were going to appeal the decision for the federal court to have the liquidator sell the land to the to recoup monies in order that the investors be repaid. <laughs> yeah, he did he did just say that. That the three extensions were because of people that wanted to take it to court. And, yeah, it actually gets better. Let's get into it. In accord with the assertions by G.I. Linda Norman and her groupies that they would appeal the federal court decision for the liquidator to sell the property, the developers could not reasonably be expected to proceed to settlement. Therefore, developers decided it more legally appropriate not to settle, but to give GI and its groupies the benefit of the doubt to either undertake their appeal and lose, as is their legal form, or hang from their own noose, which they have now done. So, he's just said that he's they've de the developers decided to drag out settlement for the liquidator and the creditors because they wanted to allow it to be challenged in court and fail again so they could go, ha ha, you failed again. Is that just not the biggest load of tripe you've heard? I suppose they're now going to try and blame that on holding the sale up. I bet you they've got ways of going, wow, who can we get hundreds of thousands of out of for that? For holding up the sale for months? Well, the thing is that if you search Wollumbin Horizons, there's only one person that's actually responsible for all the decisions that goes on with Wollumbin Horizons and selling 3222. And it's not the developers, it's the liquidator, Stephen Starks. The developers do not make any decisions about the property. The court has ruled and the liquidator acts as the court had ruled and as he's allowed to act within the law. The developers do not have any say in it. And yet... They're saying here, oh, look, we said, oh, let the, let's hold up the sale for another few months just so that we can have a good laugh at watching them fail of trying to take it to court and get it back again. You pathetic bunch of know-nothings. Seriously? So it wasn't advisable for the developers to pay for the land until... G.I. Linda Norman and her groupies had expired all of the legal options available to them. So the developers graciously extended that respect and opportunity to them. Well, isn't that nice? But here's a little faux pas he's just made up here. This is why I love the way he talks. See, he knows the truth when he's talking, and even though he's spinning a whole heap of lies, oops, he just let something slip. Did you realise what he just let slip? It wasn't advisable for the developers to pay for the land. Not sell it, pay. Okay? Purchase. So what he's just said there is that it wasn't advisable 
to Phoenix for company until G.I. Linda Norman and her groupies had expired all their legal options. And because you see that, uh, well, the most important punches aren't performing to their time scale, are they? Never mind, we'll get there. We already are. And it is we. We are really coming together. But that's a very important point there. It wasn't advisable for the developers, which is A.B. and Mark McMurtry, to pay for the land at 322, 322. Ah, uh, hang on. Yeah. Did you say the wrong thing, Mark McMurtry? It wasn't advisable for you to pay for the land until you saw what others were going to do in court first. So you delayed paying to get your own land back. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't advisable for the developers to pay for the land, not sell. And that's why it comes up here where he says for the liquidator to sell the property, the developers could not reasonably be expected to proceed to settlement. See, the developers are the purchasers. Huh? Yeah, nice little slip up, Mark McMurtry, eh? So, instead of appealing, however, all they did was to paste derisive comments about the developers and lies as to why settlement was not affected. I know, you had just been so generous as to give people all that time to try and have a go at you through the legal system. For what purpose? To get your, your jollies? I mean, seriously, do you expect anyone to believe that bullshit? I suppose your bros do. If it comes out your mouth, it, you know, well, it might as well come out your ass for as good as what it means to most people, but... Yeah, some people thrive on what stinks. Okay, so due to the lies and slander being put about by those listed above, the developers have now paid for the property in full. Again, the developers have now paid for the property in full. So the developers have paid the liquidator who is in receipt of all monies owing. Fact. So that's twice now he's actually said that the developers paid for that land and they gave the money to the liquidator. That's a very interesting comment, Mark McMurtry. I can see how AB's going to want to hang you out to dry very quick smart before you give too much else away. <laughs> the Buller Buller investors will now be paid by the liquidator. Yeah, because the developers have now paid for the property in full. Oh, wow. As they would have been years ago if G and her group of mindless, idiotic supporters had not undertaken their childish, rant fueled actions, had the net effect of costing the true investors in excess of 700000 in legal fees. Well, the fact is that, you know, that there are plenty of people out there that are famous that don't even bother suing over anything that is said against them because the first, second... You turn around to justify it. In public eyes, you're half guilty already. So the fact that you actually try to silence people in public eyes and opinion makes you guilty already. I mean, there's a reason that the royal family and all these people never answer any of their allegations. Look what happened to Andrew as soon as he thought, hey, I can explain it. 
No, you just ended up making it worse. Uh, just like you have, Mark. You have actually said that the developers have bought three triple two. You are just, I'll tell you what, you and AB, you couldn't do much better if you tried. So, and of that 700,000 in legal fees, again, this is all action that they instigated. So it was by their choice that they imposed that. And as we heard in there, that they intend to get it back. And those legal fees are recoverable. That uh, if all the judgments stand, it didn't cost anybody anything except those that they attacked. So anyway, I'll finish this post. It would also pay to bear in mind that it was the actions of G.I. Linda Norman, the antagonism of Mark Darwin, and the stupidity of those who supported them that have cost all of the investors what they have lost. Which, due to the fact that AB has agreed not to take his share out of the pot, will be far less than if AB had been so gracious and fair in this matter. Oh, wow. That just makes me want to just vomit. That, that poor OB, he's losing 500000 is he? Oh, he's so gracious, isn't he? That he doesn't want to try and prove that he took $500, a uh, 500000 that didn't belong to him, claim that it's his share, and then say here to his bankrupt trustee, here, take the receipt and give it all to the ATO. <laughs> yeah, sure. That's not bloody gracious. That's making sure he doesn't want to give the tax man anything. Stupidity. But now you've actually said that he is for owed 500000 Maybe the tax office want that 500000 from him. So he bloody well should have claimed it, shouldn't he? <laughs> Where's your receipt, AB? Because that's part of your bankruptcy conditions too that you need to keep meticulous records during your bankruptcy either you or your trustee now that'll be interesting when the court wants to have a look at that isn't it so another fact is that the Buller Buller investors were offered a 30-day contract for 2.25 million some time ago before GI and the lunatics started their campa campaigns of misinformation and slander. But they chose to waste time and lose 250000 Um, I chose to waste time? How? I'm going at my pace, mate. <laughs> Not yours. And so is everybody else. We don't work to your agenda, King McMurkey. You might think you're king of the tribes, but, you know, that's just an illusion in your own mind. But then I suppose if you took all those pieces of paper that the tribes sign, maybe you do own them. I don't know. Do they know what they signed? But they chose to waste time and lose 250000 Well, the thing is, I didn't lose any money. I didn't waste time. I'm not ill-informed. Ill it's not baseless, but it is laughable because the legal actions are yet to come. You didn't wait long enough, you dickhead. So, last paragraph. It is time for the liars and scammers who have defamed and denigrated the developers to shut their mouths, hang their heads and politely accept they were wrong. Although, as is evidence from their small-minded defamations and slander to date, this will most likely be too hard for them and those other fools who blindly believe their lies and misrepresentations. Well, I don't need to blindly believe anything 
I am just, well, one, I'm dumbfounded with the story he came up with, that he actually, <laughs> I mean, seriously, a kindergartner could come up with a better story than that. That's not very sophisticated. But then to turn round and actually confess on several occasions that the developers have now paid for the property in full. Not the liquidator who was selling it, but the developers paid. Ah, twice. On your mark, I tell you what. What else are you going to say? Because, you know, when you put your version of facts forward, the more you try and prove your facts, the more you actually show your lies. You have said it outright. The developers have now paid for the property in full. The developers were never supposed to be the buyers. You've confessed it. You have confessed the phoenixing back. Oh, wow. AB's going to be pissed at you. Hmm. If I was you, McMurtry, with these confessions, I'd be thinking about what you have on AB that's going to save your ass right now because you know what... <laughs> There's a bus coming and it's got your name on it. Watch out for the headlights. <laughs> Catch you next time.